Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is so fun and exciting to be back with our friends from New Mexico Highlands University today. And we'd like to welcome back to the program, Robert Anaya, who's the New Mexico Highlands Santa Fe Center Manager, as well as Dr. Vina Parvotia, who is the Dean of School of Business, Media and Technology. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Esteban. It's good to be back. I hope I hope you had a good Thanksgiving, you and the family. Well, thank you so much, Robert. And uh, we did have a nice Thanksgiving and hope you and your family, as well as Dr. Vina's, had a nice uh, Thanksgiving as well. Thanks. So, Thanks for having us. We're, we, have, we haven't been in touch for a while, so it's good to be back with KSWV. Well, it's nice to, to see our good friends from New Mexico Highlands University. Robert, I know every time we have an opportunity to chat and to visit, there are lots of exciting programs uh, to talk about, uh, lots of exciting things happening at New Mexico Highlands University. And today, uh, we're so thrilled that we're able to visit with Dr. Vina today about the School of Business, Media, and Technology. And uh, Dr. Vina, why don't we just uh, introduce you to our listening audience today? Tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll ask you a little bit about um, the uh, School of Business, Media, and Technology. But tell us a little bit about yourself. So I joined uh, New Mexico Highlands um, July of 2020. So it's been really interesting uh, transitioning here during COVID, but everybody has been so, so welcoming and um, you know, it's a great place to work. I came here from Eastern New Mexico University on the east side of New Mexico, uh, was there for about 13 years. So um, just great being here um, again, uh, meeting the students finally in person, meeting uh, people like Robert finally in person because of COVID restrictions, this wasn't possible last year actually mm -hmm. um and much of the earlier um this semester too um originally just to uh tell you a little bit about myself uh originally i'm from a small island um called mauritius where the dodo bird was from so it's close to madagascar so far far away from home but um i call new mexico home now well you know dr vina um i that sounds beautiful like a beautiful uh, place to have been born and raised. It is. It's like the Hawaii, uh, uh, very much like Hawaii, and we get a lot of uh, European tourists uh, visit our home, my home country. So, white beaches, blue seas, um, it's just marvelous. <laughs> now, I have a lot in common with the dodo bird. I mean, maybe in name only, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny to be associated with a dodo, but I mean, you know, it's our claim to fame, but we are nothing like dodo birds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, Dr. Vina, uh, it's nice to to meet you and to, to know about you. I got to ask you before we get into uh, the, uh, the business uh, of our interview about any special holiday, um, you know, traditions or, or meals that, that you prep during this time. Um, the big, well, we just had the Matanza at um, Highlands and that reminded me a lot of what we do back home. Mm -hmm. um, for the New Year's, we butcher um, a goat and then every piece of the goat, except for the skin, of course, is cooked in a certain way. So that kind of reminded me of home and, you know, just being able to see how different cultures still have similarities and that's, you know, really and reaching that, you know, you get to learn something from your culture, but then you see there are other people doing kind of similar things. So we just don't do it in a pit, but, you know, <laughs> just the, <laughs> uh, the culture of, you know, getting that meat and it being so resourceful, like you're not wasting any of it is pretty cool. I like to hear of different cultures and traditions, and I know that as New Mexicans, we're one family, uh, you and I and Robert, but uh, I like to hear where people um, were raised and kind of, you know, I'm a big foodie at heart here. So uh, as you yeah. can see. <laughs> um, you know, I appreciate that you asked me about something, you know, when I just came to the U.S., most people don't know about Mauritius. So people used to ask me like, you know, what do you do for a birthday? And I messed 
with people a couple of times saying, oh, we put on grass skirts and dance around the fire <laughs> when, you know, we just have cake like everybody else. <laughs> Well, we've had our fair share of matanzas here in New Mexico, and it's a rich tradition and great uh, annual tradition, uh, not only with families, but it's a big event uh, celebrated with many different cities and counties across New Mexico. So I think uh, we can understand how great that is. Well, mm -hmm. Dr. Vina, um, New Mexico Highlands University is obviously an academic institution that is well respected uh, that in our state that um, many students and alumni alike have a lot of great things to say about it. Um, I know I have family and friends uh, that have gone to Highlands that are still there that love the uh, town, that love the education, uh, that love the value because I know that uh, New Mexico Highlands University does its best to be quality and affordable uh, education for students. Can you tell us about the program there with um, the business, media, and technology, and what that encompasses, and the types of programs that are available for our students. Okay, so uh, with the business side, we have the um, bachelor's of business administration and also the master's of business am administration. And within each program, we have multiple concentration. Um, so you know anything from accounting, finance, um, international business, uh, you can find it here. Um, exciting uh, new concentrations that we just added to the MBA are a general business and also we are getting close to starting a healthcare administration um, concentration which is of great need in New Mexico and even beyond. Um, this would be for somebody um, who wants to go into managing a healthcare facility. So we teach them the business side of it and also the healthcare so that they can apply both together. And then on the media side, we have different programs. Uh, we have uh, software um, design and also at the graduate and undergraduate level, uh, we have an MFA, which is a, a Master's of Fine Arts um, in Cultural Technology and also a BFA um, that we get um, a lot of students to. And really um, big in the um, that department is internships. We work with uh, several companies um, or entities throughout New Mexico to help them with projects. So um, Santa Fe, the Children's Museum was one of the recent projects um, in the summer. So we are this whole school, we're doing great things and, um, you know, looking forward to helping students attain that education to go the next step in their careers. Dr. Vina, um, Robert and I have talked uh, about um, the awesome quality education there at New Mexico Highlands University and, and, and Robert, we've talked about, um, you know, during the pandemic, there are classes offered online and just want to ask if there is a combination of classes that are offered still online is it in person is it on your different campuses tell us about how students will be attending these classes so with covid um you know i'm very uh, grateful actually that uh, new mexico highlands university um yeah, they we try to be very conservative so we are not 100 percent back to where we used to be we do offer a few classes face to face um so this would be at the las vegas campus um we offer a lot of classes through zoom so basically you can uh, come into the class at a certain time and still get that interaction with the faculty and also the other students in the classroom. And then at the other extreme would be online asynchronous courses. That works really well, uh, like the MBA, that works really well with people who already, you know, have a job and they don't have that time to step away from whether it's family, um, career to just be at Las Vegas or even um, sometimes it's hard for students to be able to get on Zoom at a certain time. So that online asynchronous um, gives them that convenience. You know, yeah, asynchronous, just, go ahead, Robert. Sorry, Kevin, I just wanted to add a little bit that, that the School of Business, Media and Technology was kind of ahead of the curve relative to uh, what happened during the pandemic because they had already adapted 
to the working person, the person that really doesn't have time to to uh, go to a campus, the ones that wanted to had that option here in Las Vegas, but uh, they've really been ahead of the curve. And the eight-week courses, I can't emphasize how um, awesome that's been to still maintain vigor and quality, but put an individual in a position where if they wanted to push through a master's, they could do it in a year if they're highly motivated and they took classes each semester and did eight week. And so they've, they've done a fantastic job with their uh, faculty advisement. Like I said earlier, I can't emphasize enough. When you have a, a dean of a university that actually takes the time to do direct support and direct interaction and work with students, that tells you a little bit about Highlands University and our commitment because uh, Vina does an awesome job with the students and is is uh, is part of the success along with faculty and the rest of our team at the center and even at main campus Farmington or Rio Rancho. So that's the other thing I wanted to emphasize as well is that as we've discussed, uh, these are options that are um, uh, global really, uh, where you could access education uh, with the asynchronous programs. Uh, we have synchronous that are time uh, specific and then asynchronous as as Vina said that are that are uh, accommodating to anybody all around New Mexico and around the world so I just wanted to, to highlight those things because because people are busy uh, people want to uh, be able to do their work and deal with their families and so uh, the school of business and Highlands has really been accommodating to understanding those realities Asynchronous learning definitely is accommodating to people's work schedule, family schedule. And Robert, I'm glad you mentioned what we've talked about on the program before that is definitely worth highlighting is that the work that Dr. Vina and the faculty and staff do to go the extra mile to help the students to be accommodating, to help make them feel at home and comfortable with uh, their learning environment, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous, virtual or on campus, goes a long, long way to somebody making that first step to say, I'm gonna go get that education and I'm gonna continue because obviously there are times where someone might feel a little bit um, overwhelmed with maybe their life situation. They may feel overwhelmed with even going to school and not maybe they're re-careering and um, every bit of support that they can get to make their success possible goes a long way. Yeah, and I wanted to mention too, you know, if they are here in Las Vegas, they have direct access to any of the support centers, but that doesn't mean like if you're in Santa Fe, that means the only way you can communicate with us is through a phone. You can go to the HEC center and meet with somebody there. Um, you know, like Robert was saying, um, I. I've been going, I think about every other week. Um, so we set up a schedule for students who wanna come to us or, you know, Zoom has shown us now, it doesn't matter where you are, you can still, you know, get on and talk to somebody. So um, it doesn't mean if you're doing online asynchronous, that means you're um, kind of distant with the campus, you can still be involved. And I, and I tell you, I can't also emphasize that feeling comfortable with the faculty and, and the dean and others to, you know, if you want to explore uh, coming back to to attain your degree or a, a credential, that's the other thing. Maybe, Vina, you could talk about a little bit uh, the certificate program. Some people, they just want a specific skill set. Maybe you can elaborate on the sure. our certificate programs. So we have certificate programs, both at the undergraduate level and also at the graduate level. So that would be for somebody um, who's thinking maybe, you know, like I need these credits to be able to do something else. So they just sign up um, and complete these classes. Typically it's six, um, 18 credits. So it's a faster way to attain um, that skill set you need to be able to do something else. Or, um, you know, if it's sometimes it's required in your career that they want that extra, um, for you to have that extra skills to be able to do, um, you know, even be promoted sometimes. So that's available to for those who don't want to go into the lengthy um, degrees like the BBA or the MBA. 
Well, the certificate programs definitely are great. I mean, I'm I'm thinking of taking some of those those courses and your certificate programs myself. Um, I've also thought about your MBA program, to be honest with you, and I kind of wanted to touch up a little bit more on the MBA program uh, for people out there. Uh, now, with the MBA program, I have an engineering background. What are some of the prerequisites that people need to have if they're considering uh, an MBA degree from Highlands? Okay, so the GPA requirement is 3.0. And then um, if you don't have a business background like you, Esteban, then you would have to take one class that basically exposes you to all the knowledge you would need to be successful in the program. And um, beyond that BUSA, it's BUSA 5000, then you have 36 credits um, to graduate uh, with an MBA. So that's uh, nine credit courses, I mean, nine courses for the core and then three uh, for the concentration. And it doesn't mean you only need one concentration, you know, if something is interesting to you more than one you can um you know do a couple of concentrations so um it's it's a quick not quick way but you know it's a good way to get your education and we are accredited by the acbsp so they you know we just submitted a report uh in september so we get audited pretty regularly to make sure that what we're offering is of the standard that is required May I ask uh, for our listening audience that may not understand what a concentration is, if you can, you know, expand on that just a bit further. So the concentration is basically uh, where you get to um, kind of specialize in an area. So, for example, if you wanted to do accounting, then you'll have accounting courses in addition to the core courses. So um, let me see if I can uh, memorize repeat all these uh, if I have them memorized. So we have accounting, finance, general business, human resources management, management and marketing. And um, I don't think I mentioned the general business and also the healthcare administration is coming on pretty soon. Fantastic. Well, lots of exciting opportunities, whether you want to seek a, a degree or whether you want to, you know, take a seek a certificate, uh, continuing a, education there. Um, Doctor, we're visiting with Dr. Vina, uh, who's the Dean of School of Business, Media and Technology. And we're also visiting with Robert Anaya, who's the New Mexico Highlands University Santa Fe Center Manager. And uh, thank you for explaining this. I know that uh, right now we're talking on this platform that uses uh, cameras and audio and technology and uh, that you know, technology is something that is a requirement uh, in school and in business and in jobs every day. And can we talk a little bit about your tech media and technology programs, a little bit more in depth of what those are and what they encompass and how they will prepare um, our students for the future? Okay. So like I mentioned with the, <clears throat> excuse me, media arts, um, it's media arts and technology department, they have a lot of internships. So the cool thing with that department, which we're also pushing towards, uh, pushing um, students to with the business too, is the um, importance of internships. I mean, it's great that you're graduating with a book smart, but having that, um, you know, showing that you've actually, you know, got your hands dirty, you've um, actually have some experience, mm -hmm. put you way ahead than somebody just coming out with that um, degree. Mm -hmm. So they, um, in the media arts and technology, there's uh, media arts. So there are different things like recording or, um, you know, um, exhibits, all these kind of stuff that they um, learn. And then on the other side is the uh, software um, design. That's where the technology they can, um, there's even a class about designing mobile apps. So a lot of stuff that is very current and, um, you know, complemented with internship that is very important. I'm glad you mentioned the mobile apps because there's a mobile app for everything. There's a mobile right. app for and it's just an expectation that people have that oh i'll be able to go to google play or i'll be able to go to the ios store and just download a mobile app 
for this company or for this reason or for this. And to be able to have uh, that technology available um, is so important. Just, I mean, it's just an expectation as much as it is for you to have a telephone, you know, for your business. And so that is really good to know that New Mexico Highlands University is um, helping prepare um, our future uh, workforce uh, by being able to meet those demands with this education for the students. So uh, job well done on that. Now, uh, Robert, um, our listening audience might be, you know, listening to Dr. Vina and saying, man, she's got me hook, line and sinker. I love everything she's talking about. I want to you know, become a student with New Mexico Highlands University. And if they've never been a student before, uh, they may be asking a little bit about the financial aid opportunities that may exist for them. We've talked about synchronous and asynchronous learning. We've talked a little bit about the uh, degrees and the cert cert uh, certifications. Um, now the next final step people might be saying is, all right, how can I make this financially affordable for my me or my family? For sure, Esteban. One of the first things that I would ask people to do is go to our website uh, www.nmhu.edu and uh, we have on there access to locations so if you live in the uh, Santa Fe area or Albuquerque or Farmington or Las Vegas or anywhere else in the state you can click on those locations and it's going to take you to contacts like for example you know my team is Mary Angel and Mary Ann Sandoval at, at our office and, and our emails and our phone numbers are all readily accessible on the on the web page. Uh, relative to financial aid, we, we pride ourselves in bringing in students and making sure that they have direct contact with those experts in our uh, financial aid office, in our business office, in our library service office. So you don't have to feel uh, concerned or scared uh, about the process. We're gonna make sure that you uh, get through the application process. Uh, if you have transcripts you're gonna bring in, that you uh, submit those to us and provide you clear direction on that. And, and, and on that, I think it's important for me to know that we, our relationship with Santa Fe Community College is uh, uh, paramount to our work in Santa Fe, but we work with main campus in Las Vegas. We work with Central New Mexico College uh, San Juan College up in the Farmington area and anywhere that we need to to make sure that the students have what they need to get through their uh, program, uh, their program of study and their journey. You know, we it, we will guide people to Highlands University, but if another uh, institution in New Mexico is best served to provide the needs to students, then we're going to provide them contacts and information for them as, as well. It's not it's not a competition, it, it's a process of communication and choices and making sure that uh, that we give people those choices. So thanks for bringing up financial aid. That's always very scary, but there's scholarships, there's the connection to federal financial aid and, um, and other options that we work closely with our team, even in the schools, to make sure that we understand what's out there and then how to help people through that process. So www.nmhu.edu and then locations will get you to specific people that can help you like myself, Vina and others uh, around campus and, and our campus community. Well, you know, New Mexico Highlands University from applying uh, to getting support to getting in, getting the support to doing your coursework, to getting support with all the wraparound services, financial aid, is what makes New Mexico Highlands University special uh, in the eyes of its alumni and special in the eyes of the students, but the employers in seeking our future workforce. Really, I've talked to many business owners, we're small business owners, I've talked to other small business owners and ask them, you know, where do you get your, you know, um, workforce from? And New Mexico Highlands University, always at the top, New Mexico Highlands U University, very well respected by employers. And so I think that it's important for students to know that when they make that decision to go to school and they go to Highlands, that that is going to be an edge up, I think, uh, when they are looking for their future careers. So, Awesome. Thanks, Esteban. You know, uh, Vina spoke about the internships. And one of the things that our president, President Sam Minner, has 
really asked us to emphasize and focus in on across the spectrum of programs is high impact practices, right? Those, those specific skill sets that you will actually do in the community, you actually get exposure to at Highlands University. So we, we, we don't want the, the students to come through our programs and then get in the workforce and, and you know, wonder how does it really function out in the, in, the, in the real world after they've gone through their empirical training that they do in, in the classroom. So we really pride ourselves in those internships and those high impact practices practicums through our social work programs, our student teaching, uh, forestry programs, putting people directly in the forest and doing their research and, and, and work and, and working alongside professionals that do it day in and day out. So I think, I think that's a, a, a really big uh, need and it's important to us to, to try and provide as many as, of those skill sets as possible. You, you know, that's so important. Fun. Go ahead, Do Dr. Vina. Yeah, talk about that. I mean, everybody wants to talk about that kind of stuff. No, yeah. it's your baby, so I'll let you talk about it. Well, <laughs> one of the things we're doing is a hemp program here at New Mexico Highlands University. And Vina, why don't you tell them a little more about how that's working and what we're trying to do with the community? Yes. So that's the other great thing I would have to say about New Mexico Highlands is we listen um, to what's going on in the industry and then try to offer these degrees that will help students gain those skills to then be able to get into those um, job positions. So uh, with the legalization of um, marijuana coming up, um, even before that, we had uh, started offering a certificate in hemp and there are two sides of it one would be the production side so we teamed up with uh, the forestry department and there are a couple of courses um, during the summer where students come to campus and they actually get to you know basically play with dirt i will call it and then um, the other side is the entrepreneurship side which um, that's one of the focus of um, this Department of Business Administration is innovation and entrepreneurship. So the other side um, teaches you the skills you need if you want to open up, let's say, a dispensary. And the key in what we're doing is trying to partner with um, the different entities in the hemp industry or cannabis industry to help us, um, you know, produce because. Um, you know, recently we talked to um, this couple who are starting a dispensary and their fear, which we are finding out too, is this is going to be a new industry and we want new Mexicans to be able to, you know, contribute to that industry instead of waiting for the big um, companies to come out of, you know, California or Colorado and take over that too. So um, one of the things we'll be doing is, uh, you know, Robert has some connections and will be helping us and spreading the word out um, about what we're doing in that area. Well, you know, we may have some expert uh, consumers of cannabis that are listening right now <laughs> that may uh, want to decide to be experts the, the in the field of business. Is not to teach anybody how to consume it. <laughs> I, just... know. <laughs> I know. I just Sorry. have to throw a little... <laughs> lightheartedness into the, the conversation, but I got to say that um, there probably will be a great deal of interest, uh, obviously, that we've seen already uh, with this legalization from people to, you know, go on the other side from possibly a consumption side to being um, on the business side or on the retail side or on the wholesale distribution side or on the growing side. And I'd imagine that there is probably a great deal of interest in the internship opportunities with, with hemp um, manufacturers as well. I think that that is going to be important because, you know, at the end of the day, it is a science, really, when you take a look at cannabis from even watering the cannabis plants to how we uh, deploy best practices with water conservation measures to, to grow the yield that is the demand that our state will have uh, once this is fully uh, legalized uh, as far as um, for the sellers I'm talking about. I know it's legal, but now for the sellers to sell to um, others that are, uh, you know, just looking at 
how they can find a career in this space uh, to the scientists, even the science of all the different strains, whether you're looking at treating something for a medical condition or what, I know there's a sh science there and a lot of research. And so the program there uh, at, at New Mexico Highlands University, I'm sure you're gonna have uh, something that will well prepare our future students uh, and uh, future uh, workforce. Yeah, and you know, it, it, uh, it's important to note that some of our, our best uh, uh, scientists are those uh, acequias throughout New Mexico and, and our farmers that have been doing it for generations and generations. And we are wanting to, to facilitate helping them transition uh, what they formerly maybe grew alfalfa or, or other products. And, and they will continue to maybe do those, but they can, we also want to give them the opportunity as, you know, I, I may have the wrong terminology, but it's like micro businesses that that are our community people that are doing our farmers markets and 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 bringing in that local grown organic uh, product uh, to to the consumer and and this is no exception. I mean we, you know, Dr. Vina's very uh, spot on when she says if we do not provide those opportunities to our local folks, we know that. Uh, the, the market and the larger companies will, will, will drive that product. And I, I think all of us would rather see uh, more micro, smaller businesses that know New Mexico and, and know our culture and heritage and, and how, to, how to utilize that, that water, but maybe need assistance, like you said, Esteban, understanding the, the various uh, strains, understanding the, the differences in, in, in growing practices and, and processes to, to deliver that product. Well, we, uh, sir, appreciate your time this morning and just want to give an opportunity for some uh, closing remarks uh, for you, Robert and Dr. Vina. This has been an eye-opening, uh, wonderful experience conversation that I've been able to have regarding your business and uh, media arts and technology program. So thank you for that. Uh, Robert, shall we... Uh, Start with you, Dr. Vina, and then I'll finish with Robert. Sure. Um, also, I have to do a plug in for our new programs that are coming. Um, we're still waiting for full approval, but we have a Bachelor of Applied Arts um, in general business. So that's for somebody who's gone to the community college and wants a completion, a degree completion program. And the other one that we are very excited about that was brought to us as a need is a Bachelor of Arts in Organizational uh, Leadership for public safety employees. So that's going to be another huge one. So it could be EMS, um, you know, the police, um, just somebody who wants to go into leadership. That's another huge program that we're bringing on board. So um, do check out what we have to offer. We are already always bringing in on new programs just to um, prepare people for the workforce. Great. Well, thank you for that, Dr. Vina. Robert, it's always nice yeah. to visit. Always nice to visit. Remember www.nmhu.edu. You can find your con our contact information there. Uh, reach out. Uh, one thing I wanted to emphasize, like I always do a step on is if maybe you stopped going to school and you want to come back and you don't have maybe the, the grade point average that you think you should, uh, don't worry, reach out to us, let us work with you. We have some uh, provisional admission uh, opportunities, probationary ad opportunities where we can bring you in, provide you support and help you rebuild and, and get back to where, where you can be. So. Don't be intimidated uh, by anything that maybe happened in the past. And just if you need to take that plunge and want to just talk, just reach out and we're happy to visit with you to help you bring you back to work on your educational journey with, with us. We'd love to have you. Well, thank, thank you very you much, time. Robert. I appreciate you and Dr. Vina being with our listening thank audience you. today, telling us about all these exciting opportunities at New Mexico Highlands University. Hope you have a beautiful uh, day and a, and a great week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Stella.